Fast X, the 10th slash 11th instalment in the Fast and Furious franchise is directed by Louis Leterrier and it stars Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Jason Momoa and Tyrese Gibson and in the next instalment in the Fast franchise Dante Reyes, the son of the villain from Fast 5 tries to enact revenge on Dom's family by killing everyone that he loves including his son. Now my thoughts on the Fast and Furious franchise I've been all over the place. I think the first three range from decent to downright awful. Four to seven, especially five to seven, is that good period which I love. But ever since the, the sad passing of Paul Walker, these movies have just felt like clear cash grabs. Fast 8 wasn't a great movie, but I thought it had the best story since Paul Walker's death. I think Hobson Shaw was a fine spin-off. It didn't need to happen, but it, it was there. F9 was so ridiculous that I, I kind of just, it just lost me. And then we get to Fast X, which is the most stupidest and most crappiest movie ever. I know that's not really a real sentence, but I, I, I truly believe this is one of the worst films in the franchise. If I'm going to say anything good about this, I was on board for around the first 20 to 25 minutes. It felt like a... Fast Five to Furious 7 sort of Fast and Furious movie. We get flashbacks to Fast Five to introduce Dante Reyes. And we get clips of the uh, the vault scene from that movie as well. And then we have this big chase in Rome with a bomb which still has those ridiculous elements. But I, I liked it. It wasn't too over the top. It felt like the good old Fast and Furious days. But after that scene, we, we get like 20 other different plot lines. Some are introduced for around three minutes, not even joking. Forget five minutes, three minutes. And then they just never show up again. They're just there to set up future things in other movies. Jason Statham's Deckard Shaw, he has a great fight scene, I'll give him that. But then something happens, I, I, I won't tell. But yeah, something happens and he just pees off. So... He's in this movie for not even three minutes. And he's in all the trailers. He, he's on all the posters. Like, characters like that don't even deserve to be in the marketing of this. Don't get me wrong, I love that character. I love Jason Statham as that character. But if you're just going to introduce him for three minutes and leave him for the next movies, what's the point? And they do this with other characters such as Mia, Dom's sister. I'll be honest, I feel so sorry for Jordana Brewster because she's great as this character. But it's felt like ever since Fast and Furious 7, they have no idea what to do with her now. She has a really poor fight scene and then she never shows up again. And it's the same with like F9. She's in it for a bit, she does nothing and that's her character. And I feel so sorry for her because she's really good in these films. And I actually feel she's getting a bit sick and tired of it now. You can just tell that some of these actors are really getting annoyed at these movies now. They kind of just want it to end. I, I, I literally cannot wait for it to end as well, guys. Don't you worry. But if there is one character, one performance that I really did like in this movie, everyone's praising it. It's Jason Momoa as Dante Reyes. I don't know what this guy was sniffing behind the scenes, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he said he sniffed like 20 packs of cocaine because he was having the time of his life in this movie. He was laughing, he was screaming, he was cheering. He was having the, the best time ever. And his character is so goofy. Like he paints the toenails of his, of his dead victims and he flipping licks the blood off his knife like it's a flipping ice lolly. It was so goofy, but every time he was on screen, I was having fun. But I feel this is also the first Fast and Furious movie where I was actually bored. I only go to these movies now just to laugh. And I think that's what everyone else does now. But, but this one, there was a lot of downtime. And I'm fine with that, but maybe not write these downtime moments with cliche dialogue and very, very, very very heavy exposition which sometimes makes no sense at all 
It, it just felt like the writers just wanted to set up more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Instead of just telling a good story. Like, the only reason why I like those first 25 minutes is because it had a clear goal. Dante Reyes wants to destroy the family. But then all of a sudden we're introducing other stuff. And that's where this movie just goes completely off the rails. And this movie also looks really flat and cheap. This had a budget of $340 million. And yet there is not one single piece of great cinematography in this film. The poster looks more visually appealing than the entire goddamn movie. And some of the special effects, wow, wow. Some of the special effects were awful. Some of the green screen, atrocious. Some of the CGI cars and explosions, atrocious. Honestly, I, when you have a budget of $340 million, I expect something better than what I saw on the screen. And I think the worst part of this movie, the most laughable, goofiest moment of this movie, was the ending. Oh my, the ending. Do not worry, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but... I don't think you'd be surprised if I say that this movie ends on a cliffhanger. And I expect to that, I'm perfectly fine with that. But the thing is, the cliffhanger moment is so funny. Because it's a situation that seems so timid to what else has happened in this series before. I cannot see a way where the family gets out of this situation. I think it was a terrible moment to end the movie on. I know exactly what's going to happen. And it was just laughable and stupid. Why would you end it there? So yeah, uh, you, you're probably going to be disappointed with the ending, 100%. Yeah, um, fa Fast X was abysmal. Uh, what, what else could Gooker say about it? Um, the, go the gold Lamborghini looked nice. Yeah, the cars looked nice. Um, yeah, I I'm sorry, but fa Fast X has probably killed any amount of love that I had for this franchise. And I'm, I'm not looking forward to these last two movies. At all. At all. If you want to go and see it, just go and see it. Because you know they're going to make the other ones anyway. I'm so glad that this franchise is coming to an end. Two movies, come on. I can hold on. So yeah, Fast X. Worst movie since Paul Walker's death. Just introduces plotline after plotline after plotline after plotline. That goes nowhere. The ending was stupid. It looks incredibly cheap for a budget of $340 million. The only good things about this movie, the first 25 minutes, are Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa is probably the only reason why I'd watch this film again. So yeah, Fast X, another bummer in this franchise. And I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 10. It was abysmal. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. It's better than Too Fast, Too Furious, which is the worst one. But that, that's not really an achievement, really. So, yeah. Second worst Fast and Furious movie. Worst one since Paul Walker's passing. Yeah. And, guys, that is it for the end of this review. I, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I, I don't know what my next video is going to be. Probably another crappy movie. I don't know. I might rank all the movies. We'll see. But, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of Fast X in the comments. Did you enjoy it? Did you find it stupid? Let me know in the comments. Always love to hear your thoughts. Have a good day. See you later.